a sea of speculation about what changes in AI might mean for jobs, one thing has been lacking. Evidence. Until now, that is, because in a landmark study titled The Short-Term Effects of Generative AI on Employment, researchers saw both jobs and rates of pay falling after the release of ChatGPT. Researchers looked at freelance job postings on Upwork, a platform matching people with short-term work projects, so that researchers were best positioned to see short-term changes. Freelancers were 1.2% less likely to receive offers of work in any one month, and when they did receive work, it was paid 4.7% less. And to ensure it wasn't just a big old coincidence, researchers split their findings into two separate groups. Group 1 for text-based jobs from November 2022, so for ChatGPT's release, and image-based roles from April 2023, when DALI and Midjourney really took off. Now, the same trends were seen both in falling job opportunities and in pay, which means it's massively unlikely that this is a coincidence, which means that, yes, AI is having a material impact on jobs. This made me think of three further things. First, the change happened super quick. As soon as ChatGPT was released, we're seeing initial falls. Now, sure, Upwork is an unconstrained international labor market, so we'd expect to see changes happen there first. But even still, the speed is staggering. And second, with work availability falling 1.2%, but rates of pay falling by 4.7%, we can see that rates of pay are more sensitive to changes in the labor market as a result of AI, and this is totally consistent with economic history. And three, we're just looking at generative AI in its infancy. In short, the initial evidence shows that yes, AI might actually steal your job, but there's an even bigger likelihood that it will lead to lower rates of pay. So good news all around then. So what roles might be most vulnerable to changes from AI? Well, for this, we're going to turn to a paper published by the Harvard Business School, looking at the effects of AI on consulting work. A useful proxy because consultancy is made up of skills found in loads of other roles, so problem-solving, communication, analytical skills. As part of their study, researchers assigned 758 consultants at Boston Consulting Group to one of three groups doing identical work. Group 1 had no access to AI at all, Group 2 had access to GPT-4, and Group 3 had access to GPT-4, as well as prompt help. And honestly, the results were shocking. The groups that had access to AI produced work that was considered to be 40% higher in terms of quality, but they also did it 25% quicker. And the paper also notes something they refer to as a jagged frontier, where some tasks were either clearly helped by AI or clearly hindered. So almost never a neutral effect. Now, the paper doesn't go massively into what constitutes being inside this frontier where AI is helpful and what's outside of it, but I can imagine it might have something to do with AI hallucinations where the work produced by AI needed verification. Now, to dig deeper into what kind of roles might be best positioned for a world where AI use is on the rise, we're going to have to step away from established research because there just isn't enough yet, and we're going to have to go into the realms of estimation. That's useful to bear in mind. In their Future of Jobs report from May 2023, the World Economic Forum estimated which roles were most likely to increase in number as a result of AI. Manual, hands-on type roles, along with educators, dominate. While those roles expected to fall away are more repetitive and rule-bound in nature, those that might be more easily automated. This chart shows the range of roles the World Economic Forum considered, with blue bars representing anticipated job growth as a result of AI, and purple bars representing job shrinkage. I'm guessing those with both blue and purple bars are expecting the nature of those jobs to change quite a bit, so loads of churn. Meanwhile, McKinsey's chapter on generative AI and digital work from their June 2023 report highlights when they feel particular skills might be surpassed by AI. Now, focusing on the data presented in blue, those furthest out on the timescale are social and emotional reasoning and sensing, while natural language generation and understanding are expected to pass human levels way sooner. But I don't think the scale tells the whole story. It focuses only on technical capabilities, but technical capabilities aren't always what represents good work. Picasso's work is not celebrated for its technical prowess, rather its ability to capture a person, a moment, a feeling. Good work isn't good work just because it's technically proficient. 
For an architect, technical proficiency is necessary but not sufficient. Imagination, empathy, psychology, history and context are also critically important. And I'd be similarly cautious around any estimates, whether from the World Economic Forum or McKinsey. I mean, who could have thought that the advent of Microsoft Excel would lead to a world with more accountants? I don't think anyone really knows how things are going to play out. No one's got a crystal ball. But I think there are some things we can do to help situate and orient ourselves healthfully in a world where AI use is on the rise. I think it is important to get skilled in using AI in its various forms and keeping on top of how it changes, particularly in relation to our own career, referencing that jagged frontier idea of knowing situations where it works well and knowing where it does the opposite. That study with 758 consultants identified two types of behavior when workers used AI. The first acted as centaurs, according to the study, so mythic half-men, half-horse figures, who figure out which tasks are best for humans to do and which for AI, and allocate tasks accordingly. And the second group of cyborgs, so fully intertwining their efforts with AI. It's on us to figure out what works best for us. But the paper also concedes that it's clear that the best approaches to using AI are not fully understood and need to be deeply examined by scholars and practitioners. My view is that we're absolutely in a bit of a hype cycle when it comes to AI, and the answer is definitely not to throw ourselves at careers that correlate to lower risk in respect of a world where AI use is on the rise. I absolutely recommend staying agile and informed. Pay attention to what you pay attention to and explore those things, picking up skills and experiences that align. I think the absolute best way to mitigate against the risks of AI to any career or potential career you might be considering is to do stuff that you enjoy. Now, this runs a risk of sounding really quite trite, so let me explain. The number one factor I've seen correlating with success in my initial career, my 10 years in investment banking, followed by my current career, 10 years as a careers consultant, is people who enjoy what they do. It's those people that attract the projects, the collaborations, and grow most because that new work is where most development takes place. And before I say anything else, I'd love it if you subscribe because I'll be covering more research that gets released around AI and the future of work. So what about societal shifts and how language forms a part of how we assess AI? We talk about the threat of AI, we talk about AI stealing our jobs, but the outcome might be positive. In 1930, The Economist, John Maynard Keynes predicted we'd only need to work 15 hours a week by 2030 due to advances in productivity, which have happened but the benefits have accrued to capital rather than labour. In 19th century Britain, a group of textile workers referring to themselves as the Luddites destroyed new machinery that threatened to take their work away. Now today, if you call someone a Luddite in Britain, it's considered a low-key insult. This is someone who's a bit backward-looking, but I think we've got it wrong. I don't think the Luddites hated machines at all. Rather, they sensed the breaking of their social contract and that change was going to happen at their expense. Now, if AI does prove to be a net job taker, I hope the benefits that accrue from that are spread at least reasonably equally. When I first started scripting this video, I thought I'd probably end with a conclusion that says, yeah, sure, AI might take a few jobs, but it will add a few, and I don't know, maybe we'll end up with even more. But the initial evidence suggests otherwise. Time will tell whether that stands up. I'd love to know where you sit on some of the ideas that have been shared in this video. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being you. I'll catch you next time.